it was one of the, um, it was one of, what do you call it, the, um, um, fuck, it had the, Somebody would say your name, and uh, like you were coming down the hallway, and I'd be like, "Oh, where's that motherfucker? I'm gonna say hi." And uh, I remember you were running down, slamming your head on lockers, fucking buzzing shit out. I just remember everybody moved to the side, paving the way, just so they wouldn't get trampled by the owners. <laughs> Okay. I was uh, I, I remember doing that quite a bit. I was the one that you'd wind up hearing about on the fucking news, but uh, but but the news story just never fucking came to fruition. Grade on up through high school, I always got picked on. I always got teased, and I started getting bullied. Like fourth grade, I was the only redhead in fourth grade. I was the only redhead in my entire class of I think there were about fifty or sixty because it was a double classroom. We had Mrs. Mrs. Tabor and Mrs. Crab, and there was and, and yeah, <laughs> but but it got even worse because um, there was a kid there, and he uh, when we get into our they separate us into even smaller groups so that way they could handle us a little bit better. So like okay, so that there's 30 kids on this side of the classroom, 30 kids on this side. Well, they split up that. Uh, that 30 and the 15 that are doing their homework and 15 that are doing a lesson. They do that constantly. And then in the, on this side of the classroom, 15 are doing a lesson and the other 15 are doing right. their homework. I was put into this, uh, into this study group that there was this kid that always picked on me. Like, fucking like, it was his lot in life to have fun picking on me. And the biggest one that came was that one one day, the kids that I did talk to in fourth grade, one day I came in and I put my book bag down and I was kind of talking to a couple of the kids that I used to talk to and they stopped talking to me and they avoided me like the plague. And I was wondering what the fuck was going on. And uh, I, we get into our little study group and I'm sitting around this big rectangular table and I'm sitting there and across is sitting this asshole who I hope is fucking dead, and is fucking died in a car fire with the rest of his fucked up family. But he, like, stand there, and he's looking at me, and he's like, so what's it like? And I go, what? And he says, it's like, what's it like having AIDS? And, you know, mind you, this is like when I'm 11, 11 or 12 years old, so this is like around wow. 1989, 1988, and, you know, around that time, AIDS was a big fucking thing that was talked about on the news because there were like no treatments or there were barely any kind of treatments being talked about. There was hardly any education about sexually transmitted diseases or anything like that being shown on things. There certainly wasn't anything like sex ed being taught in fucking elementary schools. Right. You know, uh, so you hear the word AIDS as far as any fifth grader knows in that classroom, it's, you know, aromatically contagious, you know, like if, if I breathed on you wrong, you might get AIDS. The only thing that they knew about AIDS was that it will kill you and that there's no cure for it. That's all we knew about AIDS that, that you know, at, at, at that age level at that time. So the thing was, was that the reason that I had red hair was because I had AIDS. And so everybody fucking avoided me. And I remember, like, crying in the classroom because I couldn't fucking be around anybody. And the teachers, when the teachers found out about it, they didn't do shit. They didn't, like, they didn't fucking take them to the principal. And then they, all they did was, like, don't say things like that. That's not nice. That doesn't, that's not helping. That's right. not saying he doesn't have AIDS. Don't say stupid shit like that. You're looking like an idiot, you know. They don't say that. Don't do that. They're not saying that's not true. As far as the kids see, it's like it's possibly true, but you don't make fun of him about it because he's gonna die soon because he's got AIDS. <laughs> thanks to his fucking ginger red hair. <laughs> and at the time that I was growing up, when I was eleven, my hair's a little bit darker than it was. Like my hair's darker now, but at the time it was bright red. You know, so you could not you could fucking find me through a it, through a telephoto lens on a helicopter, you know, it was bright. I was a beacon, 
So you can, you know, the and they said that uh, he's he went on to go that my AIDS was really bad because the brighter my hair was, the worse the AIDS is. So I had to put up with that. So from fourth grade, and and it's not, I mean, like the rumor got dispelled rather quickly, but that's really all it took. Sixth, seventh, eighth grade, I get picked on even more. Finding that, like other people would find other things to pick on me for. Uh, ninth grade through senior year, at that by that point, by ninth grade, I said, "Fuck it, I don't really want to talk to anybody." <clears throat> so the only friends that I had, uh, you came around in my life when I was a senior, when I was getting ready to leave. Uh, Jason Cash came around when I was in sixth grade, and he and I were pretty much the only. He was pretty much the only friend I had from sixth grade until I met you. And that's the only, and that's all that I had. Other people that I would hang out with from time to time, but nobody that I would ever see as like a, a long-lasting friendship. Right. You know. So and so, so you and Cash are really the only two from my school years that I still keep in contact with. And 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 I think it's just by a miracle that I even keep you guys in my friendship because I was so ostracized in school. That I didn't want. I, so any kind of weird shit that I did in school, I didn't think anything of it because people weren't going to talk to me anyway. Well, after you left in uh, senior year, I remember shortly in my short, uh, sophomore year, I I left. You know, I wasn't in school. You know. Did you want to drop it out, or did you go to another school? I I I dropped out. I went to uh, homeschool, which never happened. You know, later on I get my GED, but you know the right. the. This was the whole thing. I was like, uh, so in line with uh, once we started, you know, projecting with trying to do music. Yeah. Once we started getting onto that whole thing, that was that's when I was like, I had this was this was the like, you know, yeah, I wanted to do. You yeah, know? I'd have to say that music was the one thing that kind of kept me together. That and. You know the friendship that I had with you and Cash. Yeah. Those were the only. Those were the three. Because really, honestly, you know, my mom. You know, my family was always there for me. But it's not. It's it's a completely different uh, dimension when you think about it in terms of people that you can really truly confide in that you don't want to fucking try and talk to your parents and about. You know, you right. try. You can you can tell just about all your fucking hopes and fears to them, but they've got the parenting advice. And you don't want to hear the parenting advice. A lot of times, the ones that are growing up, they just want to hear something like that 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 knows where you're coming from in a modern, real time world, yeah. you know, and and put up with that. So playing music and hanging out with you guys was really what what kind of kept it together for me. Well, I had different, uh, you know, I always had different friends really young in school and people, uh, you know, who were um, always the social outcast. Who had different color hair, or you know, uh, at that time there was uh, somebody who was going on with Marilyn Manson at the time called the Jim Rose Sideshow Circuit. Yeah, I and, remember Jim uh, Rose. Um, I was I was turned on a few friends who were you know punk rockers, and they uh, you know got turned on by that, and uh, that was that was just like one of those amazing amazing things that just like that scene, it felt like you know. I mean, uh, it, it felt something like, not really, I'd say, like, you belong, but it was it was something like, they, they were the only friends, you know, as well, you know, as you. I mean, y'all were the only ones who had, uh, who had talked to me in school throughout, you know, a place like that. And there was, um...